Hey, what's up guys? I'm Luki Puki, and today I'm going to show you how to do some soldier jumps. Rocket jumping is one of the crucial elements of this game that has kept me playing for years. In this video, I'm going to break down some very useful yet very fun rollout jumps that you can use to show off to your friends and to impress the ladies. I'm going to go step by step in as much detail as possible for each jump, but I recommend you have at least some basic rocket jumping knowledge before taking these jumps on. If you haven't learned how to rocket jump yet, learn the basics first. If you want to skip to one of the jumps in this video, I've put timestamps in the description, and the first rollout jump I'm going to teach is for the map Sawmill. This jump is going to take you all the way from your spawn to a nice little vantage point over the enemy spawn. On red side, walk out onto the balcony and first rocket jump off this wall over to the little slope on this first rooftop. After you got this first little part down, practice pogoing and gliding up the slope over to this next part rather than just landing. When doing so, make sure you stay crouched and avoid pressing the W and S keys. Be sure to shoot basically straight down below you as low on the slope as possible as to get enough speed for the next part. The third part is a simple little pogo right here, followed by a strafe to the right using the D key and the mouse. For the final part, just like earlier, pogo and glide up the slope and aim to land over on the vantage point. But say, you want to be a little bit less aggressive and you just want to go for the health back area instead of going all the way like right in front of the enemy spawn. Just pogo off the roof right here instead of going to the right all the way, and there you have it. You can land right here next to the health pack and the ammo. You can get to that health pack by strafing all the way to the right and going off the ramp like for the other jump, and then strafing to the left like so, but this way is less direct and you take a little bit more fall damage. But what if you're doing matchmaking and Valve puts you on blue instead of red? Fuck. As if Valve's prejudice against the blue team wasn't evident enough by the SFM shorts, they decided to make the rollout harder for blue team due to the way blue's side of the map is structured. The first little ramp you went off before is now a little too narrow to get through consistently, and the roof part over here is completely flat, so there's no slope you can glide off elegantly like before, just fucking tires. You can still make it through this narrow ass thing if you really want to, but I find it easier to pogo off the rooftop part there instead, do the same exact thing there, and then you're gonna have to pogo here because there's no slope at all there. You can then land on this rooftop here instead of the other one, or maybe if you can build up enough speed you can actually land on the one like before. To get to the health pack, you can do the same thing as before kind of, and just like shoot off the roof like that, or to take less fall damage, pogo off this pile of wood and completely negate that part of the roof. Alright, so Badlands. This jump is going to take you from mid all the way to Spire, Bats, or Lower Lobby. Alright, so first shoot off the wall like this, then shoot directly below you as you go over the first train, then the second train, shoot a little bit in front of you to compensate for speed, then strafe left and pogo once again, gliding up the cliff part, and there you have it. At the last part of the jump, you can strafe wherever you want to land if you don't want to land on bats, like here I land lower lobby instead. And then here, I just completely mess up the jump and land on the side of Spire. Cool. You can also start this jump from house, although it is a little bit trickier. First, do a wall jump off the corner right here, pogo across the second train, and then like before, pogo and glide up Pride Rock to get to Bats or wherever you want to go. Moving on to Payload Badwater, on this map, I'm going to show you one two-part jump and then another jump for the other team. For the first jump, right outside Red's first spawn, jump off this wall, fall down here, pogo, then glide up this slope, strafe left using A, and then you're gonna wanna pogo twice more to get around that corner. And there you have it, part one. You may be better off going to the right here instead to get this health pack so you have enough health to do the next part of the jump. The second part of the jump can bring you all the way to blue spawn or if you want to one of the health packs instead. Start on the wall right here and then immediately pogo at the top of this first little hill and strafe around this corner, pogo really quickly right there, then one final pogo to get the job done. This part of the jump is the hardest jump out of everything in this video, for me at least. Say you want to go to the health pack instead of going all the way to blue spawn, all you have to do is just do the jump normally and then just break your momentum using the S key right about here. You may have noticed that I glided up the little staircase instead of going over it like I did before. I just did that because I kind of had to to fix a mistake, but if you prefer doing it that way, go for it. Now I'm going to show you a jump that gets you all the way from blue spawn to red's first spawn. There's a few different ways to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it my way. 
first come up to the second beam and shoot yourself upward. Then classic wall jump, just fire a couple of rockets while hugging the wall to get yourself moving. Then once you find yourself over here, you're gonna want a pogo, and on the second pogo, strafe around the corner to the right. And you got it. If you're not a big fan of wall jumping, this alternative consists of all pogoing, although it takes you a bit more into the open, so it's a little bit riskier in game. Start the jump on the first beam, come up here, pogo immediately, pogo once more, then over here do a speed pogo, and you're done. You can also just shorten the jump for the purpose of getting behind the enemies. This jump is great at the beginning of the round if there's a sentry in the meta spot. For the last jump, we're gonna be over here on CP Process. This jump is probably my favorite one in the game. It brings you all the way from the spawn to mid right here. For the first part of this jump, wall jump right outside the spawn here, pogo and glide up this little slope. Then you're gonna wanna take this corner and wall jump off this wall, pogo across the control point, then hardest part, time this pogo right, get up this slope, and then with the right momentum, you should be able to land right up here. If you want to be a little bit less aggressive, you can cut the jump short and go for the health pack over here. Or if on the other hand, you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you can add on one pogo like so to get to IT. And with the process jump covered, it's time to wrap up this video. I hope I didn't move too fast for you guys. I moved the slowest on the very first jump on Sawmill, since that one covered almost all elements of rocket jumping perfectly, so I hope the pace overall was okay. These jumps definitely aren't easy. Collectively, I've spent hours practicing them by myself on a private server, and I suggest you do the same if you want to master them. In the description, I've put console commands for some binds that will make practicing on your own server much easier. Also, if you've never made your own server before, all you have to do is open up the console and type map, space, then the map name, such as koth underscore sawmill. You'll have to enable SV cheats for the binds I provided to work. Another quick note, if you're wondering why I left out jumps in the clips I'm talking over, it's simply because I wanted to keep this video timely. If you want to see the upward jump or the full bad water jump you need SV cheats for, there's a lot of guides out there already, but I could include them in a future video. One final note, sorry for 12 days without a video. This video took me probably like 30 hours to make, and it was because I kept constantly changing things, going back in games to re-record, changing my lines. If I had been more organized and less picky, this video probably would have taking me like a day, but it wouldn't have been as polished, so I really hope it was worth the wait. Next, I'll be making another weapon analysis, and after the reception of the pilot episode for Bronze to Platinum, that dueling video, I've decided I'm going to make it a series, so look forward to a new episode coming soon. If you have any other requests for guides I can do, weapon analyses, or anything, be sure to let me know. With that being said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day or night, and peace out.